All right. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, well, before we begin, I'm just going to allow more people to just trickle in, but I just want to start with uh, quick thank yous, right? Um, thank you for everybody that has had a hand in essentially putting, you know, Toro Hack um, up. And uh, this is a great pleasure. Um, this is uh, my personal second year attending. And my, my um, last attendance was a year ago before the pandemic. So that was our last live in-person on-site, which won't be the last, but that was just the most recent one. Um, I know more people are coming in, and um, so we'll give them about another minute before we fully begin. But um, I get a chance if, if everybody's coming in and wondering, what did I just click on? Um, you are in the eSports session, uh, and I will essentially be able to share a little bit more about what we're doing in the space, um, how our students are activating, and what those opportunities are going to look like, especially uh, for our Dominion Seal students and really what it looks like for um, a bigger whole, if we can impact that hopefully today. Um, our awesome panelists are here, so um, give mad shout outs to our uh, panelists that are doing all of this running around. I don't know how they're doing it, but they're doing it. So if you could take a moment, recognize everybody in the room. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much, Ruben. Yeah, I, I apologize about the... Uh... We have no, no some technical issues. So <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ruben. So welcome everyone. I would like to introduce our special speaker today. Ruben is the academic advisor and general manager of the Esports Associate Association in California State University, Dominguez Halls. He is a strong believer that um, that through the strategy of esports, students can obtain the hard and soft skills necessary to take on their challenging challenging career pathways. Ruben is also an educational esports podcast host and a public uh, publisher and a public uh, book publisher. So please give a hands up applause to Ruben and I'll take you, I'll let you take it from here. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you. All right. So happy to be here and um, going to start, right? So before I start, like I said, want to give big thank yous um, to Adobe, who I understand is a big sponsor, has a hand on this and for the great team that put Toro Hack together. Okay, uh, just a deeper dive. I think what everybody wants to know is um, our philosophy, right? What, what is it that we are essentially centered around? And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna share my screen in just a moment and really have you um, take a look, if you could, um, of what it is that we um, are centered around. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to ask our panelists if there's a possibility if I can share my screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pause. No, no second. So, yeah, Anissa, can you allow him to share the screen? There you go. Mm -hmm. Got All good. privileges. Okay. So here is our philosophy. Hopefully everybody can see this. Right. That was really quick and fast. If you missed it, our philosophy was captured right there in that single quote. So if you missed it, please on chat, tell me that you want to see that again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm saying, yes, please. I missed it. Okay. Here we go. For those who are just waking up and joining us, here we go. This one's for you. Okay, so there it is. I'm gonna stop share for a moment. Uh, so hopefully you saw that, right? Uh, for those that are joining us, that we're treating esports as a strategy and not an outcome. And I can unpack that further for those that are just joining us. Uh, essentially, we're looking at helping our students find those hard and soft skills and then be able to transfer them. It's not necessarily a means to an end just to play let's say competitive gaming, 
and then thinking that you're going to become just a competitor all your life and go to that one percentile of becoming a pro. Uh, we see that there's more roles and essentially uh, that can be had if we essentially provide that experience in our campus to our students. So uh, that graphic right there, obviously representing who we are and essentially making that come to life so that there's some movement. Uh, I'd love to share that this was done by one of our students uh, who essentially uh, is doing great work in a lot of 3D visualization pieces that essentially is calling for that, right? Our students are essentially asking to do more in the space to essentially showcase their skills and abilities. Okay, without any further ado, I'm going to start my uh, PowerPoint deck in just a moment and share with you all, hopefully everybody can see this, our presentation that we have for you today. And forgive me if anybody on chat, if you have any questions, this is for you. So uh, feel free at any point to chat any questions or if our panelists, if you see questions that are coming in and I miss it, feel free to pause me and uh, interject with any questions. But today I'm here to talk about our ecosystem and explain and share a little bit of what we've done thus far and what this year, especially with the pandemic has really done for our association. And um, I'm gonna move forward now and quickly give Matt shout outs to uh, our first event that we were able to attend about a year ago. Um, this was in February, so before the pandemic and everything that caused this disruption of us doing all sorts of virtual events. And I gotta say, what, what, what conference doesn't have glitches, right? Or any interruptions. So you are officially in a conference if there's any uh, disruptions. <laughs> so not to worry. Um, but if you want to catch a brief little um, overview of what we did last year, which we're going to be doing very much this year, just more in a virtual setting, of course, uh, there is the YouTube link. Uh, Matt, shout outs to Anissa, who was there uh, recording our event and being able to showcase what we were doing in the space. And really what we were doing is essentially showcasing the evolution process of how we got here, right? How, what is it that you're looking beyond the interface for those that are new to esports? Okay. Going back to our philosophy, if you missed it, for those who are joining late, um, so sorry, you missed out a really cool graphic, uh, motion graphic on top of that. Um, but essentially we are saying that esports is a strategy and not an outcome. This actually comes from our president who also believes and affirms the strategy that this is truly a student success strategy, which leads me to my next slide. Okay. So just to give a little bit of historical timeline, uh, two years ago, gosh, hard to believe, 2019, uh, our university um, had the chance to uh, co uh, collaborate, excuse me, with the LAEDC. So this is the Los Angeles uh, County Economic Development Corporation. This is a great place to essentially, I, I recommend for anyone to look it up, uh, to start seeing what uh, these new developing jobs are going to look like and they really explore areas of, of innovation and it was hosted by riot games for anybody that doesn't know riot games is a gaming publisher so anybody in chat if you want to put it out there feel free um, i know there's a few folks that are still uh, either new to the scene or just want to learn more so essentially that was a good place for the industry, educators, outside partners to really come to a space and really talk about the empowerment that esports was delivering, right? And that right there, uh, we were able to understand really where those gaps were, right? I think when we're talking, we're understanding one another and trying to see how do we connect some of these dots that are currently not connected. And you can see it's very tiny right there, but you can find uh, our past historical um, events that you'll see our president, uh, Dr. Parham, uh, who was there actually giving a, a, a keynote speak um, opportunity uh, there. But coincidentally, um, same year, just later in the year, uh, I was reading a Harvard Business Review uh, journal. And essentially this, this journal piece really unpacked and shared a lot of about what the future was going to look like as far as uh, the automation of jobs, right? And it was sharing that in 2019, 
10% of the workforce was already transitioned to automate and that the projections were going to look at about 50% by 2024. Well, that right there escalated, especially with the year that we had last year with the pandemic. And according to the World Economic Forum, it even shared, you know, 85 million jobs, which I highlighted there bold and red, uh, were expected to supplant by 2025. So 2019 couldn't project that, but 2020 gave more affirmation that this is a reality that we have to start looking at. So our institution, at least for me, I was researching and we are very much looking for our best interest for our students trying to understand, okay, what is it that you can get out of an experience that would be able to highlight not just the hard technical skills, but also shed light of the human soft skills. And so the employers uh, would essentially come back and share, hey, you know what, what's really needed? And these are the top three I highlighted, there's more. But even the most sophisticated technologies could not essentially replicate thinking critically or communicating clearly with a team or solving the most complex problems. You need a human soft skill mind essentially to be able to do this. And so uh, that's an area that essentially turned into a lot of focusing and saying, okay, how can we showcase these skill sets and then be able to transfer them? So as we know, for many of us that are participating in our esports association, that this is a student led organization that our students essentially are looking towards finding community, building that and be able to showcase their talents and skills and helping others also find those. Whether you're a gamer or not, which is one of the biggest focal points that I love about what our association does. And so we know from a lot of research is that extracurriculars do boost uh, graduation rates. We wanna see you graduating and we wanna see you holding that diploma and be able to throw your, your cap up in the air. So we know that the way to do that is to be able to engage in exactly what the students are engaging, which are you all for some of you that are attending our campus and, and for those that are uh, currently looking to, to become a future Toro. And that led to a major dialogue that faculty, staff, before even getting to the students uh, that needed to be had, which in my mind, I call it the meeting of the minds and allowing our faculty, allowing our staff to really see what our students were doing in the space that went beyond that interface, right? That went beyond just what you're seeing uh, on a, a channel or what you're seeing live in person of seeing players compete competitively only. And so that allowed for that discussion to essentially start the actual understanding process and seeing where those skills lie and also warranting our student and faculty dialogue to be had, right? We need to ensure that those dialogues help because of the many stigma that's behind gaming that we understood that was going to be a big challenge whenever you're gonna start something in pursuit. And so by doing that, we were able to essentially uncover other aspects, right? That gaming essentially has walls and, 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 and things of that nature that essentially are problems that cause more hurdles, uh, things like accessibility, things like inclusion, uh, things of that nature that still have more opportunity to, to, um, to, to meet and, and see how we can essentially break down those barriers. And so what was being had is events like this, Toro Hack, our alumni event, that was again, our last uh, live esports activity event that we were able to do back in February was to bring our alumni to see what esports was doing for our students. And at the same time, this association, um, we're fairly infant. We're about, I believe, three and a half years old. We'll be four officially this fall, um, as far as being active on campus. So we, we are barely even getting a graduation class and alumni network created. So uh, we believe that this will essentially grow over time. Now, these skill sets that were being done, they were not necessarily you know, something just minor. It was a lot of technical aspects to it, right? There was troubleshooting, there was uh, online broadcasting, 
there was uh, uh, server connections that were needing to be set up for communication purposes. Uh, things of that nature that you think, hey, anybody that has uh, seen someone do something like this, you think you could just pick up really quickly, but there was a lot of issues that, hey, if something were to go wrong, do you know what to do in case of that emergency? So we needed to create hubs for people to start learning about the space so that way they were able to essentially connect and meet in this whole new way. Uh, so when everything occurred last year with the pandemic, uh, our association wanted to move it forward and not necessarily give up the ability of connecting and working in teams because quite frankly, working in teams is something that we're gonna do as a constant no matter what. So being able to share case these types of skills to our faculty, to our alumni, to our parents, uh, as some of them have attended some of the events, allow for that dialogue and discussion to happen to essentially break down a lot of these barriers that were being had. And uh, if anything, last year created an, an understanding and deepening that the social emotional side was very much affected uh, because well, we're not connecting in the same way we used to, uh, but it allowed for more room and growth to do this in a digital way. Okay, moving on. Our four domains. Uh, this is what we are centered around. Our academic research principles and our community engagement. Those right there I highlight really quickly because essentially those two are the pillars that we put more emphasis and focus in. The other two essentially are very important, critical, but we feel that if we can do those two things right, that the other two will follow. And so things of this nature was very important to understand that we were not creating a division with if you're a gamer or a non-gamer. If you look at esports and you type it up in Google, it'll say competitive gaming, right? But we understood based off what we were learning from our community is that 12% of our population that we serve about 17,000 students, a little over that actually, 12% uh, are actually in the competitive scene or like to do some level of competitive gaming. But if you essentially do more research and essentially say, hey, what about other aspects like casual gaming or you know, watch parties or uh, you, you game, but ne not necessarily looking to compete uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day or on a weekly basis. What we learned is that it catapulted to 80%. So what we were understanding and unpacking is if we only think about the competition, it will just put us in a narrow pathway, which we didn't necessarily want to do. We wanted to essentially broaden this because we all do some kind of level of gaming uh, and in and, and different modalities, right? Uh, that could be another tier bracket that we were also unpacking. But it allowed for more roles, agencies to be established within the association that allowed the students to group and interact. And, you know, it started even the conversation of being interested even in the competitive side or in the entertainment side. And so uh, that is how we essentially were building our community and also understanding the research and data that we were receiving from our student population. Okay. Moving on to some of the courses that are being taught. Now, a lot of this is found on our website, right? So all of these are hyperlinks redirecting. And uh, happy to say the, the College of Extended Education, uh, International Education Division, everybody there has done a great job, you know, focusing on more certifications, more uh, master degree options, uh, anything that will essentially help you uh, unpack what it is that you're looking to do in your personal careers, but at the same time, understanding that there's a lot of opportunity moving into the esports industry that are seeking out intelligent minds like you all. And being able to showcase what you're learning through some of the experiences that you're getting from an esports association space, that right there goes hand in hand. You know, a lot of it is we have to put our skills to the test, right? Now, these are now talking about the the hard technical skills. So yes, we could do this in a class and we don't necessarily uh, you know, think twice uh, sometimes to post this, let's say on our LinkedIn or on our digital portfolios or resumes. But those are the things that 
the employers, the industries want to see more of, right? We have to essentially show proof of that concept and take education and experience hand by hand. So things like esports, having our students to take it one step further, even after the class, not necessarily that you're getting a grade that, hey, this is your grade in esports. No, we essentially want our students to be able to work in more teams, to have a hand on projects that are carefully um, uh, analyzed and essentially getting the proper feedback to enhance into a piece, right? To a either a concept piece that we're putting together or showcasing the evolution process to get to that piece, which is essentially allows that industry to essentially look at our students into a light that puts them in a best position forward. Couple with that, this is where we transition into the career center pathway, right? We essentially want to make sure that anybody that is taking anything that is putting them in the best position to essentially strive for their dreams or wherever they want to land, that is where the career center that we have as a resource allows that dialogue to happen, to be able to re review with you things like your resume, your portfolio, and even prepare you for interviews and exactly what to do in cases like that. So um, I put here that we have two programs as well. I'm going to underline the, the bottom two there. The CSUDH eSports certificate program, this is something that we launched a year ago. Again, we didn't know that the pandemic was going to happen, right? Uh, we had bigger plans to do a lot of this work on site. But essentially, we still flew the certificate so that we can essentially help our community. And um, how we essentially were able to do that was we created a certificate that was more centered towards our K through 12 sector and our partners. Uh, that certificate allowed our partners in the K through 12 to essentially start looking at onboarding esports programming, uh, enrichment courses, and start helping develop uh, a culture and understanding what the students were essentially doing beyond just the level of gaming. That was coupled with our mentorship program that I'm happy to announce that we'll be doing uh, more in the summer, this summer, uh, still in this virtual format, but it allowed for us to engage in different ways. And what we did find that we were not prepared uh, necessarily to, to seek out is how we can start breaking that dialogue and being able to help students take dedicated time to what they're going to do in gaming but understanding what that evolution process was so that the dialogue with parents and child or student would essentially be able to have uh, in a manner that would uh, allow parents to support. Um, and I would say for the most part, if you talk to parents, uh, they wanna support their child, but sometimes they don't know how to do that, right? Uh, they didn't necessarily grow up in esports, and some of the students are just barely onboarding to esports. So there has to be a dialogue to essentially help uh, understand one another so that way there is uh, interest, genuine interest in supporting those kinds of uh, aspirations and goals. Happy to say that we are working with uh, the Department of Computer Science, so major shout outs, we are in developing uh, another component to the certificate. And uh, this is something that, again, provides baseline level knowledge to allow you to enhance your current career um, pathway so that way you know hey this is something that you got a chance to take on more experiences to build in your repertoire to be able to match experiences and education so that way you you feel more well-rounded to hit that ground running when you're ready to graduate okay going to move on to our internship component so we've had the great pleasure to partner with the CSU Entertainment Alliance um, so recommend anybody to um, to research them, it's CSUEA uh, uh, that, that you could type in and then type it .edu and you'll find uh, the CSU um, Entertainment Alliance. But if you look at our website as well, uh, you'll see there's a way to join us. And in that join option, it describes our internship um, opportunities. We're currently in development of more that is coming and um, that's a place for you to dialogue with myself and essentially get you in the position so that way you're activating your skill sets and really understanding where you wanna go, right? Uh, I have students that essentially I advise that um, they're not, they would, they would classify themselves as, hey, I'm not a gamer, um, more in the casual scene, I uh, don't do competitive gaming, but I like to learn more about the space. 
and essentially students get a chance to learn more about an industry such as the esports industry and other industries that support the ecosystem and put them in the best position to understand how we're going to teach you about new practices, get you integrated with the community, understand even things like the lingo that goes around and, um, and any questions at that point any further, we, we, we tailor it to the needs. What the CSU Entertainment uh, Alliance has done for our organization is essentially help solidify and expand that interest pool. Meaning there are other great companies in there that you'll notice right off the bat. Uh, so I invite you to check them out. And we're listed in their, um, in their website under internships if you're interested in one. What this allowed us to do is help serve our CSU network, right? We're one of the largest, I'm sorry, not one of the largest, we are the largest uh, university network, uh, not only in the state of California, but in the nation. So we're comprised of 23 CSUs, so making us the largest. Um, and it allowed our students to essentially engage with other students from other CSUs and working in teams with other projects and goals in mind. Some that allowed them to work as a team to the industry that are looking to see what are some of our students doing in that space, because there's high interest to understand what the collegiate field is doing to better prepare our students and also getting them excited about the new possibilities and jobs that are out there. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure I'm going to pause for a moment. Um, panelists, am I okay to keep going? Is there um, any questions? Yes, uh, we do have a couple of questions in the chat. So okay. I have um, the first question which, ha which has the most votes is what is your favorite competitive video game to play? <laughs> yeah, there you uh, go. That is a uh, personal. <laughs> you, you know, if I answer that, I'm going to be like getting chat remarks from our other captains that are, are uh, you know, that if I say another team or another game, excuse me, they're going to think I have preferential preference. Um, you know, I, I had the, the great thing about all of this in the esports, even with new games in development and games that have been just recently launched. Um, I've enjoyed all of them and, and I'm sorry if I'm, I'm not giving you the direct answer, but, you know, I, I honestly root for our, our, our captains that, that are spearheading everything in the competitive and even just getting the development team going, but it's fascinating to me. You know, we have expanded, you know, the, the teams that we essentially have formed and what it's done for our captains. So I'm a big root and supporter of our students and engaging whatever it is. I'll be your biggest supporter, <laughs> but um, I've enjoyed watching. If I had to give a few, just yesterday I was watching our Rocket League team uh, defeat uh, a top-seeded team and moving on to the semi um, to the semis in, in the playoff brackets. And so, uh, you know, I, I get excited for Rocket League when I watch it. I get excited for our Valorant team, who are defending champs right now and that are going to be um, defending the title for some of these competitive uh, conferences that, that they're playing. And our Overwatch, what can I say about our Overwatch? Uh, it, it's through our Overwatch that um, we had a chance to deploy our very first mentorship program. So that always has a, uh, a near and dear spot in my heart. <laughs> so I don't know if I've answered your question, but that's a great question no. to put me on the spot. <laughs> no, that is, that is a great answer. No, that is a really good answer, yeah, thank cool. you. So we have another personal question. That will put you on the spot again. So <laughs> controller or mouse and keyboard and why? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. Now, yeah. You know what? I'd like to say, you know, that should be a no brainer, but uh, uh -huh. you know, I, I get it. I get it. You know, if I'm not a true gamer, if, if I don't have, you know, my mouse and keyboard uh, with me. So uh, I'm going to advocate for mouse and keyboard, but it's not to say that that is, you know, the only true method, right? You know, I, I've had the chance to work with, um, you know, with, with people that uh, don't have the ability to use mouse and keyboard or even controller. They had to use customized uh, controller settings. And so, um, you know, you choose your flavor, you choose your, your style, but you know what? I just want you to get that experience, right? Uh, to be able to connect with others. But, <laughs> but if I do any kind of level of gaming, it's typically uh, mouse and keyboard. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, same here, actually. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the good. last question. Okay. Uh, 
Do you believe that esports has some form of connection with college education? If so, why? Gosh, great question. Um, and, and that's key right there is that, uh, yes, uh, the, the answer is yes, in my opinion. And I think really the charge is to help other colleges really understand the educational values that there is through this strategy. And if we were to only hold esports through that competitive tier only, we would then again put it in a narrow pathway that it could only grow so much. Um, if we put more value in understanding a lot of those major principles, you know, starting at the K through 12 sector, being able to build our students that digital literacy that is so key and critical. Just imagine what kind of student you'll be by the time you get to colleges and, and colleges really need to embrace more of this method, not just an outlet for students to just only game and, and really not getting anything out of that valued experience. Um, we understand that, you know, we unplug sometimes and through the stresses and, and we do it in a leisure manner and that's totally fine. But I think what we forget for those that grew up in a different era or generation, because I will raise my hand and say, I grew up in a time where, where I didn't have the internet and we had dial up right as our starting, um, uh, you know, starting grounds. And when games met the internet, it disrupted, right, the, the market, the field, the experiences. And now look at what we're doing now. We're talking things like augmented reality, virtual reality, things that put you even more inside the game. Um, and so we have to understand that there's a lot to that space and also understand that gaming isn't going anywhere. If anything, it's cemented that it's really here to stay and for colleges to understand and adopt that method and, and be one of the first, if anything, to get ahead of something that students are already propelling to do well with our educators, not necessarily being um, uh, the mindset of seeking, hey, I'm gonna raise this bar so high that students can't necessarily reach in and walk away, but meet students in those middle so that way there is that moderation empowerment that allows our students to innovate and create. So essentially not only being the consumers, but also being those content creators that allow our students' brilliance to shine. And uh, what better place to do something like this and dabble and, and make mistakes and be able to do this without feeling that, um, you know, you know, th th that, you know, it's shameful or what have you. This should be the safest space for you to experiment. Uh, so that way you're ready and prepared for um, the career. But great question. Gosh, I love these questions, Mohammed. Keep them coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I, I love the answers too, by the way. So thank you so much, Ruben. Yeah. So I, yeah, this is, uh, we only have three questions. Okay. No, thank yeah. you. And if there's more questions, feel free. This is awesome. I will um, do. I'll make sure to interrupt you. Yeah, no, thank you. Hey, and keep me on, on honest with the time. Sometimes I'll, I'll lose that. So uh, I can talk about esports all day. <laughs> okay. So, so moving on, again, we have these pathways and I invite you uh, to connect with us uh, through our website. You can also reach out to me uh, via email or Discord. Um, talk to any of our members, happy to work with you and, and seeing what it is that you're looking to do and put you in those spaces that are currently working on or establishing new ones. Um, I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, there you go. All right, um, just to give you a quick overview, again, um, I know we're limited on time, but what I wanted to share with you all is how are we doing this in now in the four domain pillars? Where are they fitting in, right? And so essentially, uh, like I mentioned a year ago, we worked with Compton USD. Uh, I think some of you that are working this event were also part of that experience and we were able to mentor high school students uh, from Compton and essentially it took about two years to help them develop their esports presence. And that event, or I shouldn't say event because it wasn't one day, uh, that month long mentorship, we introdu introduced um, new programming methods that really tied into the empowerment of students and being able to start learning the process of gaming and really impact how to essentially look at strategy in a different way and what all of this looked like in a virtual space, uh, even more so because, well, we didn't have that luxury of being all together. 
Um, also what it did too, I'd like to even add to this effect because um, this was really key and monumental is that, you know, our Compton students didn't necessarily have the equipment prepared and needed or connections or anything like that uh, to be able to play virtually. So what Compton did was really put a big investment in helping our, their students and, and, and as a whole, our students too, um, to be able to thrive in that environment and, and being able to provide gaming laptops for them and uh, being able to dialogue with parents that and siblings that wanted to be in that space and, and also interact. So the true empowerment of peer to peer really exists in esports. And, you know, something that that I truly affirm and, and invite you to be part of that experience. Okay, um, I, I'm not going to go through all of it. I, I, it's here on the deck, but essentially, I uh, got really excited about our health and wellness. Uh, that was very key. Getting um, our department psychology, excuse me, our psychology department on board to understand what gaming meant for our students and how it felt like it was the only normal thing that they had left during, you know, still, you know, into this moment, but during the really the height of the pandemic and what, what it was doing on the social emotional side and how to deal things with adversity, resiliency, uh, how to even take a loss, right? Things of that nature uh, was something that our students wanted to learn more, proper exercises that would help uh, you to even move and, and break down that stigma of what a gamer quote unquote looks like portrayed by the media. And also on top of that, um, it was talking about macro microaggressions, even defining what that is, you know, sometimes, you know, we can't be assumptive and know what something is or experience something if you don't even know what that was. So being able to share that kind of dialogue and being able to understand what that looks like in the digital sense was very key for our mental health and, um, and for us to be aware how we can conduct ourselves in that digital pathway because, well, I look at all of our college students as major influencers of the space. And also in order for us to be good examples, uh, we have to start dabbling those practices and understand uh, as well. And then being able to portray that out to our um, K through 12 um, uh, student uh, leaders that are, are also active in the space. Okay, uh, Tor, and I'd like to share too, uh, our Tor Learning Center and Testing Center, excuse me, our Tor Learning and Testing Center, um, uh, major, you know, kudos to the work that they're doing in mentorship uh, and tutoring. But we have a lot of our esports students in this space that essentially are helping students uh, that are, you know, struggling in any form um, in the STEM side of uh, curricula and being able to collaborate with them uh, is truly a gift so that we can essentially share other methods and even go through more programming and opportunities that we're still in development. Um, on. Okay, uh, let me move forward. Um, again, this is more research based, but one of the things I want to highlight is what we did with our pep band. Um, and, and the reason why it, it's because uh, our music department was hurting and, and still would say to you, like, this is not an ideal situation to be in, in a room, uh, quarantined or what have you. Um, I, I need to play with my band. I have to be together. We have to see how the sounds work, all of that. So very happy to share that our Toro Pep Band, uh, they launched their Twitch channel and we were a part of that process. Uh, we helped them out from the ground up to essentially find ways and opportunities for our um, Toro Pep Band to, to play their music and construct pieces. And happy to say they've been active since uh, last fall and still every week, I believe every Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, at seven o'clock, they go on live and they get a chance to play music. And what I love what they've done is they're composing some of their favorite game title music and they do a great, great job. And I'm not saying this to be biased because they're Toros, but I love how they push the technologies. I, I highly recommend uh, to check out their channel, give them a follow and, um, see what they're doing and, and review some of the past VODs. Uh, and they'll talk about music too on top of that. Uh, Dr. Chika Inoue, who is um, just well-established, if you look at her bio, I mean, there is so much uh, to admire about what she has done, is the advisor for the Toro Pep Band. And her and I have worked together in a couple of talk sessions in our 
in our podcast. But um, she's doing an amazing job and, and, and major kudos and shout outs for anybody that is in the Torah pep band. Uh, keep up the great work. And opportunities like mentorship has still become a thing, right? Essentially, we are helping schools that perhaps the university have never has heard of before through this method and strategy of esports, understanding where those needs are that makes and differentiates schools. Some will tell you, hey, we have to thrive in excellence and we have to put our best competitive team out there. Some will say, no, we're not necessarily competitive, but we like the content creation side. We like to dabble in creating video components and, and pieces that would essentially um, show our school pride. So it's really understanding where those needs are. And, and really what we see is that there's multiple ways to build community. Uh, a lot of great research and data that I invite. It's kind of hard to see, I'm so sorry, um, but I'm happy to share this deck uh, with the team afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna move forward. Uh, our community engagement, um, this is huge. Uh, what I love, what our students wanted to do again, we saw the pandemic as a terrible thing for everybody, but our students rose to the occasion, rose to the challenge and said, look, we wanna help social causes. We wanna make social impacts that would essentially not necessarily mean to a organization that uh, is currently in gaming. We wanted to help organizations that are doing great work to the effect of feeding people. Uh, when I say feeding people, I'm talking about feeding, yes, food to those that are necessarily, you know, less fortunate, right? And so our, our campus really holds that near and dear. And what I love that our students were dialoguing is, hey, how can we do something very creative that would allow other communities that don't quite understand gaming or don't work in that area, what we're doing. So there was a strategy there to help others build awareness that are not necessarily in that space. And so i um, happy to share, and this is, you know, again, DH uh, students that just had this idea and they wanna spin it and wanna be able to ideate it uh, and prototype it, design it, do the proof of concept, see if it works. This is the best place to design think, if you ask me. Um, the gaming sector, yes, if you think of esports, you're thinking about certain esport game titles, but we opened up a subdivision that umbrellas that, and essentially it's called speedrunning. And for those who don't know what speedrunning is, I invite you to type it up and see what comes out as far as um, what it means to the gaming community, but it's essentially beating a game in world record time. So beating a game from A to Z, as fast as you possibly can. And I love what our students, how they acknowledge speedrunning. They said to me, and this is their words, this is their voice. They said to me, well, Ruben, eSports, if you compare it to regular sports, it's all team-based, right? If we had to put it in simplest terms, speedrunning um, is very much a competition within yourself, right? So if you compared eSports to sports, the traditional way, then what you see is it's a team that's very much compared to a basketball team, a football team, a soccer team, just, you know, baseball team, what have you. But speed running, the competition within yourself is very much like, well, if you're competing with yourself in a traditional sense, such as golf, swimming, track and field, these are all self comp competitions that are more independent that has something to do with time and scorekeeping. And so speed running does exactly that. And what it did for us was being able to do charitable events through this method and be able to host um, uh, our students that were either the event planners or the video producers or the actual runners to be able to help other charitable organizations that had no idea that this existed and be able to raise funds to help their purposes, uh, especially in a time of need like last year. So that's what you're seeing there. Happy to share that um, our students had a great hand in this and they were the first to do it and other institutions were very much uh, wanting to be a part of this. So it was really neat to see how more people wanted to culminate in that space. Okay, gonna move forward just because I wanna make sure we're good on time. See if we can capture as much as we can today. 
So um, the competition side, right? We just shared academics, research, community engagement, and now moving on to the competition. Happy to share, what can I say? Um, if we do those two things right, the others will follow. Uh, our competitive team, very much disciplined, understand things like time management. Again, these are things that you don't necessarily teach any course. You have to start developing those human soft skills. Being able to structure practice, uh, being able to deploy information, whether it's strategy or whether it's reviewing uh, VOD notes. Um, you know, we do an exercise that is very much conducive to a gap analysis to understand how we are moving forward and obtaining those goals or at least working a little bit each time when we meet so that there's intentional purpose behind that meeting. And it led to things like winning tournaments, conferences, and uh, being distinguished that way. So these are just and being invited to major invitationals with esports professional teams and going the distance in, in many cases. So happy to share and brag about our student success. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's really, really a, a true method of understanding if we can do those two things right, the others will follow. Um, our next component, I think I shared with you with the Entertainment Alliance. Uh, this is really key for us. Uh, we wanna keep building, cultivating those skill sets. You do not have to be a senior in order to be part of this. I'm happy to share that I'm working with students that are now very, very eager to the to all classes, if you will, from freshmen to seniors. But I've noticed bigger senior pool than freshmen and sophomores. So I invite you all, if you're interested, again, you can reach out to me. Happy to share all the different pathways of obtaining credit or having you connected and seeing what that experience is like so that you can start moving your um, experiences over to a credit side for your uh, educational purposes. Okay, so that's a quick overview. And again, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of I'm coming to the to the near end. Um, so what I wanted to share is another graphic with you all and um, kind of get you thinking. This is what we are looking to do in esports. Um, and and this other graphic here is really to showcase you know the six colleges slash schools that we have in our campus. Some of you, I understand, probably have not touched our campus grounds, right? Some of you are transfer students and transfer in the time of pandemic. And what can we say? I wish I could give you a digital tour. But when we do come back to normal, uh, I can't wait to, to you know, meet you all in person and, and get a chance to share more about what our campus um, you know, means to our students, what it means to us as faculty and staff. And uh, really the goal is that there's, there's a touch point to everything you do, whether you decide to be in any of these degrees pursuing, that you have a touch point to essentially say, hey, I wanna join this because I wanna inform my research study. I'm happy to share, we have you know, students that are psychology majors that are researching our competitive gamers and seeing what the correlation is between gaming and long-term memory. Uh, you have the opportunity to incubate. You have the opportunity to expand uh, your, your skills um, through different methods. So eSports is really that vehicle and that strategy when we talk about you know, the student success model uh, to allow you to essentially be able to have a space where you can meet other students, meet with other students outside of DH as well, and start um, feeling that you're you're being culminated, excuse me, being culminated, being uh, collaborative with other staff and faculty and being able to culminate with everybody as well. Um, I'm sort of near at the end, I think, no, Mohammed, and, and if so, please uh, interrupt at any time. Yeah, yeah, well, we're coming to the end of the session okay. time, yeah. Right, uh, well, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions, I guess this is a great time to um, do it. I believe we're, uh, or said, yeah. The so we have one last question. How was how has the pandemic affected esports? Yeah, great that question. Is, yeah, great question. And um, the the pandemic, I, I would say, did a couple of things, right? Uh, that accelerated what esports is as an industry, what it is for us. Um, the pandemic, you know, affected other. Let's. I, I'm going to start with with our students. 
definitely put us in a position to think, okay, how do we get more organized, right? Um, I, I still remember that day that it happened, that we were emergency lockdown. And that day after of that emergency lockdown, we had a, um, a uh, cabinet meeting, which we had to, you know, obviously cancel on the onsite, but we quickly had to run and adapt and, and meet online, right? We we're like, okay, we, we, we don't know what's going to happen, but what do we do? You know, essentially we can't necessarily stop or do we want to stop, right? And I'm, I'm very glad to hear that our, our voices of our students and it was unanimous, wanted to continue. But what it did for other teams is to start learning and discovering other talents, right? So for example, I'll give you an example. So um, our competitive uh, Super Smash team, uh, it's not the best conducive way to compete competitively on an online form. It's really best designed that game title. And again, there's some game titles that are like this to do an in-person live. Well, they had to drop and dip in activity uh, as far as the com competition side, but it opened up discussions to essentially look at other talents such as like content creating. Uh, so it gave other opportunities to essentially see how can we continue the development without necessarily regressing or stunting our growth in any fashion. So I think what it did is gave us those opportunity markers. But again, it, it's how you see things, right? If you look at it as a problem, then it's a problem. If you see that problem as an opportunity, then you see it as an opportunity. So I'm happy to share that our students adapted quickly, uh, but it took that transition to, to understand and unpack. But great, great question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruben, for the amazing presentation. And it has been our pleasure to have you here with us today. Awesome. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, everybody. And don't forget, I believe there's uh, esports tournament. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong. It's I don't I don't want to say it wrong, but what time is it again? The, the esports tournament. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, give me a second. Um, so the esports tournament is actually has started already. So it's at 10 a.m. But yeah, you can still join. So everyone, please go to the esports tournament. It's they have a live stream if you want to watch or if you want to join, go ahead and do so. And right. yeah, enjoy your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Yep. If there's any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions and, and dialogue with you more.